assemble yourselves, Israel. It's time to assemble yourselves. The call is coming out. Listen to the sound of the horn. Listen to the sound of the lion roaring. Because it's time for Zion to go out of Egypt and into the wilderness. I'm going to keep promoting this. There is a march going on, and I'm not really sure when this march will be. But there is a march going on, an assembly of Israelites that are going to meet and march. And uh, I keep seeing the post, and I'm trying to get more information on this march and what is going to happen. Um, this is a quick, quick video to recap the last video. We have to get ourselves prepared. We got to get ready to leave a body here. We can't stay here. The water's polluted. The land is polluted. The animals are polluted. They're splicing cold water fish with tomatoes. And they're making genetically altered pets. It's called Gene Pet. If you look on uh, YouTube and Google it, it's called Gene Pet. G E A Pet. P E T. The new things are are in, in a. Um, Coma reduced state, and they're being sold as pets. Like those who were old enough to remember the gremlins. So they're selling these things. These things they have genetically, uh, uh, genetically um, engineered in a, in a laboratory by splicing genes of who knows what. Some say human and animal. Um, DNA, but if you think I'm lying, look it up, Gene Pet. And they're selling these things we're living in a time where they were doing the same thing in uh, Noah's time. And what did the Messiah say? That when you come back, it's going to be like the times of Noah. They were splicing genes and everything back then. So we can no longer keep on denying what's going on out here. And for the life of, for the life of me, I don't understand why all these so-called Negro leaders um, that see all these wicked inventions being uh, created out here, knowing that these things are wicked, knowing that these things are, you know, um, against the laws of the Most High, whether you believe in the Bible or not, you know these things are not of the Most High. So why would you not tell your people to depart? Why would you not tell your people to leave? You're telling your people to stay in a place where as though it's unsuitable for them to leave. This place is the dwelling place of every foul bird and every filthy uh, spirit. As the scripture says, the Bible tells us in Revelations, come out of her. Touch no unclean thing. So come out of her. So you don't be a partaker of her plagues. But yet, we are staying put. You know, we're, we're, we're staying put. We're talking about sending our kids to college. We're talking about future plans. As if we don't see these things going on. And we know they're going on. But why, why are we still, you know, staying under the delusion that these things are not actually happening. Well, I'm going to try to uh, build the policy of low high. This is with the, um, if you can see it, this is what it looks like. That's supposed to be the new animal that's been, uh, it's called Gene Pet. 
bio um, bio bio um, technology has uh, successfully created a uh, uh, living organism for children to play with. They want you to have demons in your homes, <laughs> little gremlins in your houses. Now you know that they have went over the dark side for real. Um, you can Google this up and you can uh, go on Google and see it yourself. It's called genepet.com and you can read what it says about it. Um, pretty much, you know, um, this thing here, it looks crazy. Uh, it's going to meet the gene pet. Biogenetic. This thing right here is for a child to play with. And we want to try to build here. I mean, we really want to build in a place where they are genetically modified and changing natural designs. I mean, really, we really want to stay in a place that actually is doing this. Like, for what reason? What reason do we have for staying in a place like this? What? I mean, I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't understand why we still wondering uh, if Barack Obama is going to give us our first 40 acres of the mule. Barack Obama is proud. He ain't done nothing for us. He has not spoke out against any of the unjustified homicides by police or by white people. Well, let us do the same thing. And I guarantee you, he'll speak out about it. So, with this video, it's just a wake-up call and a backup to the last video that we have tried to build here. We had the Black Wall Street, and for most, they only know that it was only one Black Wall Street, but... It was more than one Black Wall Street. We had in every city our own cab companies and our own bus stations. We had in every city a form of wealth and areas in those cities where our people were wealthy. These people throughout history, every time we built from Rosewood to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, they would come and tear it down. Israel Hill, you know, we had uh, a society of people every time. We had black governors at one time. We never had black governors since they came home from the First World War. We had lieutenant governors. We had all the things that we want to have or call for today, we had way back then. They just stopped it, took it away, and did not allow this to be put into the curriculum in school. Why did they not put in the Black Wall Street teaching in the school system? When we know that it was, because if they would have taught it in the school systems, then we would have not felt inferior. But yet, if we would have never segregated with them, we would have had the knowledge of Tulsa, Oklahoma. We would have had the knowledge of all the other areas in the United States where wealthy black people lived and had businesses and had, uh, 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 had uh, wealth. But they had written it out of our history so that we would not learn it, so we would not know this. So my point to you is, every time we went a step forward, they knocked us back 10 steps. Every leader that we had, they murdered them or they turned them over to serve their purpose. And the only thing that we have gotten since we have been released from physical slavery is mental slavery. They still hang our people. They still shoot our kids in the streets with no, with no justice. They still create all types of havoc in our community. They poison our air in our community. They do chemical trials. They, they, they do all type of experiments on our men in prison, in the juvenile system, in a, in, a, in a black community hospital. They do all types of experiments on our people. So therefore, these people do the same thing Hitler was doing. These people do the same thing that the eugenics project was about. They do it against us. They do the same thing as if they had to fix us. So they do all this stuff because they got to eradicate us from the earth. Because something is wrong with us. Well, what the truth of the matter is because we are melanated people. And they are non-melanated. Non-melanated people do not think like melanated people. Non-melanated people do not act like melanated people. Because we receive our energy 
our source of knowledge and wisdom from things that are melanated, like the sun gives us stronger melanin. It doesn't do that for non melanated people. Non melanated people go out to the sun and they burn up. Our hair is only for non for, for melanated people. So we don't have lice or should I say fleas in our hair like they do. They are a totally different race of people that have been cursed. Anytime you walk around with bugs in your hair, like an animal, then that means you're beastly. Anytime you are depleted of melon, and everybody needs melon to survive, then that means you are cursed people, but you have take, they have taken their cells and made themselves to be beautiful when in the, in the, in the, in the times of our forefathers, those who were non-melanated were considered albinos or lepers, and they were hated. So now, fast forward our time, they make the whole world believe that blonde hair and blue eyes is the most beautiful features in the world. When these people cannot do the same thing as melanated, they could never ever have picked cotton. They could have never ever went through the uh, Sahara Desert. They could never ever survive a heat wave. They would die. Their skin would peel off their bodies. They would burn up. I know, for example, I worked in a farm in North Carolina. And on the farm, there was a white man there by the name of James. James took off his shirt because it was hot. Within an hour, James had blisters all on the back of his neck. The next day, he looked like somebody just took an iron on him and burned him. And then the children that were there asked me, do I get Sun, uh, do I get sunburn? I said no. All I do is get darker. And they said you lucky because they know they can't they can't enjoy the sun like we do. Now there are some white people when they go out in the sun they get dark because they got melanin in their system. That means that they still got the genetics of their original forefathers, which were all melanated people. So those who do not have melanin in their bodies hate those of us who have melanin because we represent what they don't have. We represent the pyramids of what they used to be. That's why they did what they did in the movie called Rabbit Proof Fence. When they went over to Australia, took all those black Australians, the original people that were there, and they mixed the white people in with them and had babies with them and kept mixing them until they depleted all the melon out of them. That was their, pro that was their purpose. That was the project. That was the reason for them taking them children that were half white and half black and putting them into camps and they were matching them up with lighter people so that they would have children that would come out lighter and lighter and lighter until they eradicated the whole bloodline of any melanated people. That's what they did. They did the same project in Africa. So they're doing it right now. A lot of our women walk around here trying to look like they're white. They, they're straightening their hair. They're putting in perms and putting in glue. All the things to damage their scalp and damage their hair to, to look like somebody who is a curse. This is, with the, this is the mindset of our people from being in a country or being under the rulership of a hated people, a people that's hated by the sun, a people that's hated by the earth, because white people have more accidents than anybody. They fall into caves, they get ate up by sharks and uh, whales, they, uh, their plane crash constantly, their farms uh, have a whole lot of droughts. They go through more stuff than anybody I know. Their children have a lot of diseases, are born with all kinds of deficiencies. That's why they're killing black kids for their body parts because their children need them. They're, 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 their women cannot produce children. That's why they have us, our women, have our abortions because if we don't have abortions, we will outpopulate them and they know that melanated people and we mix with their women, we're going to turn their race into black people and they can't have that. So they know that their women have a problem conceiving children. That's why they have to have somebody donate eggs to them. That's why they tell you that if you're a woman and you want to make some money, one of the ways of making money is donating your eggs because they can't have children. They have to get all types of stuff done to them. Uh, uh, artificial insemination, uh, test tube babies, all these things because their bodies can't produce naturally like ours can because we're melanated. They make us hate the fact that we're melanated, but what makes us perfect is the fact that we're melanated. All the food, 
They got beautiful colors, are melanated. They try to make us eat synthetic food that is not melanated. That's why they make GMOs because they can't live off of melanated food. Melanated food does not do anything for a non-melanated person. It only does so, so that's why they're committing, they're, com they're creating GMOs, genetically modified foods that they can eat. So by us eating this genetic modified food, what it does? It makes us sick. It doesn't do that to them. That's, they're not telling you that. The same way that if you look at Europe, Europe, the, they don't have um, their people who get birth, birth certificates and social security cards and have themselves uh, uh, um, um, uh, treated the way that we are. When we get social security cards for our children, what we do is we sign our children over to the government and they become wards of the state. Well, they don't do that in England. Only they do it here. That's why, you know, we have to fight to try to get our freedom. That's why if you have children, don't register them. Don't register them. Don't give them a shot. Raise them up naturally. Have natural childbirth. Don't even let nobody know that you even got a child. Like a lot of people are doing they're having babies and they're not even getting birth certificates or social security cards for them because they know that once they do this, they are awarded to the state. That's why when a married couple divorce and they fight and they go through all kinds of stuff, they got to go to court to determine who gets a child. Well, how is that possible when the courts have nothing to do with making a child? Why they got to step in and say anything? Because you gave it over to them when you got a social security and a, and a, and a, and a birth certificate form. So now they are wards of the state. You look up in the Black Law Dictionary and figure all these things out instead of watching TV of, of, um, uh, of, of idiocy, stupidity, entertainment, and coonery, and learn some real educational things that can be viable in rebuilding your people, then you would never ever be sub you would never ever subject yourself to giving your children away to monsters. But that's what we have done. All of us have done it. We all under these curses because we didn't know them better. Now that the truth is out and all the information now you gotta use it. You gotta take control of yourself and your life and your family because your children are the replicas of you. That means they're your genes, that's your genetic uh, bloodline, that's your generation. 50 to 100 years from now, if there's going to be anything left to you, it's going to be from the children that you have and from the children that they have and so on and so on. And what you do today and prepare for your children of tomorrow is going to show what kind of person you was because your name is still going to be on this planet. Your children still going to be on the planet, and everybody going to know that these are the children of so-and-so. And they ain't been nothing. They ain't crap. They ain't mouth to nothing. Every last one of them will remember alcoholic, drug pimps, going to prison, dying, killing everybody, getting killed. That will be your legacy for the rest of your, to, to the earth has been renewed in righteousness rule. Your legacy will be, I dare you're a parent of this, that, and the other who wasn't nothing. Instead of being the uh, four parents of righteous children. And it is shown for what you do. So you have to understand that you cannot keep on allowing your enemy to teach you and teach your children. You got to take back what belongs to you and you have to teach your children the truth of our customs, of our ways. We are not niggas. We are not spicks. We are not coons. We are Israelites from the tribe of Jacob, from his 12 sons made us. And those of us who came through the slave trade, we know who we are and we need to start acting like it. We need to start hating each other and killing each other and look at the white man and look at him and say, now you the enemy. And we're not going to let you kill our brother. Anytime you can sit there and watch a cop kill another man that look like you, you're a coward. I'm glad and I praise the Most High that I never ever in the years of my life ever was in a situation when I watched a cop beat somebody down because I probably wouldn't be here now the way that I am. So I, I praise the Most High for that because the Most High didn't allow me to be around that because he knows what type of spirit I got. I don't believe in being uh, passive by no means. I believe in being humble, but you put your hands on me to try to kill me or hurt me or my family or any, anything that the Most High has given to me as a responsibility, I'm going to do my very best to send your ass into the ground that you never rise again. I'm not going to never let you get a second chance to do any harm to me or anybody else. And that's how every Israelite man needs to think. 
You gotta stop being cowards. We weren't born to be cowards. We come from King David. We come from Solomon. We come from Isaac and Jacob. We come from people who were never afraid of anybody. All now we come here, we've been stripped of our identity and we've been stripped of, of our culture, our language, and we become a pacified, weak people. You can't do that. Everybody picks on us. You just look out when you go out to the malls and how all these nine millinated people when they see you laugh at you when you got your hair in natural. They laugh at you, but I laugh at them. Because they only can wear their hair in one style. Mexican men, they only can put gel in their hair and make it look slick back. They can't do nothing else with their hair unless they cut it off. Our sisters can uh, braid their hair in a hundred different ways. They can style their hair in a natural hundred different ways. And they look like queens that they are. But the white woman can only style her hair in a certain way. Straight. That's it. And when, and when you look at a grass, a blade of grass, when a grain of grass dies, it bends. So when hair bends, that don't mean that it's alive, it means it's dead. So we have to get out that mind state of this indoctrination of thinking that we are inferior when we are not inferior. We are the best on the planet. We got to get out the mind state of thinking that our color is a curse because we're dark. No. We are made this way. We are made in the image of the Creator. The Messiah walked on this earth. He was dark. Solomon, Abraham, Moses were dark. We come from the same bloodline. They hate us because we come from the same bloodline. They hate us because they know that we got power when they don't. Why do you think the white men and white women would take the little boys on slavery and put their feet on them? Because if they had rheumatoid arthritis, they thought about putting their feet on little boys and little girls that the power of these children would heal them of their ailments. What would make them think that putting their feet on an Israelite child, an Israelite uh, uh, girl or boy, would heal them? Why do you think they was rubbing black people heads for good luck? Why do they always want to sing spiritual Negro songs to soothe them? To make them feel better? Look at, the, look at the movie 12 Years of Slavery. Slave master wake them up in the middle of the night to come sing for him. To soothe him. You got to know your history. They know who you were. That's why they did the thing. That's why they were rubbing your head for luck. Because they knew you were the children of Israel. That's why they took your little sons and daughters and put their feet on them. And pressed down on them all hard, all night long. To get the rumor toys and arthritis out their feet. Because they thought that because we were the children of Israel, we had problems. Anybody that possesses the children of Israel will possess wealth. Everybody knows that. And if you do any type of research... And look at how many times Israel was in captivity in the past. And the people that had them in captivity were the wealthiest people on this planet. Just do your research. Whenever Israel was in captivity, in every nation, they was the wealthiest. That's why the United States, first thing they did when they came over here and killed, the, killed all our people that were here. And then came and got the people that was in the, uh, hiding in the West Africa. And brought them over here, how you think they became wealthy? These people didn't have no skills. These people weren't smart. These people were the filth of England. Why do you think England sent, sent out a place for a new country so they can empty out their prisons? What came over to America was all their rapists, all their child molesters, all the filthy people of England that England no longer wanted. And they sent them over here. When they had put this new colony over here, and when they came over here, they came over here with diseases and they were dying. The pilgrims they was over here were dying because they did not know how to farm. The Indians had to teach them. But what you really don't know is that these people knew who we were. And that's why they brought us over here, because whoever possessed the children of Israel will be wealthy. Every nation that possessed us had wealth, because they had the best of all the people in the world, all the scholars were amongst our people. So they were able to take our ingenuity, our skills and our talent and capitalize on it and build their empires off of our skills. They didn't have any. Do your research on the Europeans. You'll find they were taught by the Moors. The Moors that would teach these people not to keep animals in their houses that were farm animals. They lived in a house with farm animals. Who does that? Who? Tell me what race do. Even the Africans over there knew not to be like that. But yet we have allowed these people through TV 
and through manipulation to teach us that we are inferior and they are better. And they're more intelligent. They know every single thing. These people don't know nothing. They are the most ignorant, stupidest people you will ever meet. They talk with a language that seems to sound so creative and so sophisticated and so intelligent. And when you break down every word they say, it don't mean nothing. I mean, as they come up with words, they do this in court. They would have a, the DA read our charges on an, on an Israelite man who don't know what he's hearing. And these charges are not even in the law books. He made them up. And a, D, and a judge knew he made them up, but I don't say nothing, and these charges carry sentences, 10 to 15 years. And they're not even in the law book, because we're so ignorant, we don't study, we don't learn nothing, we would never know what somebody's saying. We just sitting there looking with our hands behind our back, like, oh my God, they charged me with this, what is that? And it's not even in the law, and you're a lawyer who's laughing because you know you don't know, he's going to sell you down a river. So you have to understand, you don't get no justice. If you got a lawyer that sit there and allow the DA to lie and get charges on you, and you pay for this man, that tells you something right there. And note, they practice law. They're not allowed to be real lawyers or judges. They practice it because they still are under England. And in order for them to really have a real court, it must be through England. That's why when you look at uh, the Amistad, when they were trying to bring them to slavery, that's why they went to the courts of England and petitioned them for their freedom. So you have to understand what's going on. And you have to understand that you cannot no longer be stupid and in the dark. Learn from those who are willing to teach you. And then, most importantly, pray and ask the Most High. Seek His face daily. Because a man like myself, we error. We make mistakes. We're not perfect. Sometimes information is not correct. So you have to do the homework and you have to do the research and you have to go overlook everything. I got a lot of elders and sometimes I find mistakes with my elders, but they're still my elders. I still respect them. But if I did not do my research, I would not know that they made mistakes. So just like me, some people call me a moray. I don't like that title. I'm just your brother. And I don't want to be called an elder because I ain't that old to be called an elder. But, if you, but I understand a lot of y'all do that out of respect, but I'm your brother. And as your brother, I want for my brother as I want for myself. And what do I want for myself? I want to see all my people happy, living free, not being murdered and killed. I want to say our children to have a chance to compete with the world if, if, if that's the case. Because I guarantee you, we just leave this country and go somewhere else and live and open up our schools. We'll be able to compete with everybody in the world. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you within 10 years of us being a country, a nation, we would take over the whole planet because we got all the intelligence with us. And I'm talking about from those who are crackheads on the streets to those who are considered to be illiterate, have more intelligence in their thumb and their pinky and their toes than most of these uh, professors and uh, scholars in the major so-called universities. You ever listen to Nehemiah, y'all shall have been y'all around, and this is real talk. And keep in mind, a lot of you men that you see, like myself, we're going to keep on promoting this. But one day you're not going to be able to hear us, because we're going to be overseas, if it's the most high's will. If we don't get murdered here first, we're going to be overseas. And you won't hear this righteous teaching coming, because when the darkness comes, no man can work. You've been warned. So with that, I'm gonna leave you with this, what you learned, what you heard from the beginning, and what you heard from the beginning, you're gonna hear now. I'm gonna let you hear the lion's roar first.
And I'm going to lead you with this. Hear the sound of warning that's going out to the nation of Yashua. Prepare yourselves, army of the great creator, the eternal one. The armies of Yashua assembled ourselves and prepared for war and prepare to leave. Your Exodus time is here. Shalom.